Konnichiwa and welcome to the talking part of today's video. We've just taken the um, subway from Kyoto to here in Osaka where we're about to go into the Osaka Aquarium and it's not just any normal aquarium, no! This one houses uh, whale sharks which are the biggest sharks known in the world. And they have them. Uh, they're one of a few aquariums around the world that do. And I just, since I'm in Japan, already recording probably the other video that you've seen, uh, I thought I couldn't pass up this opportunity as they are both in Osaka. It's gonna be interesting. There's probably other things here, uh, like huge Japanese spider crabs. Oh, so they'd be called here, yeah, spider crabs. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're just gonna go in, have a look, see what it's all about. So let's go in. One of the biggest things that surprised me about this aquarium was its entrance. You end up opening into this beautiful rainforest canopy and they just so happen to have one of the rarest and biggest amphibians, the Japanese giant salamander, which of course had to have its back turned to me. And something really cool that they had there was this big waterfall feature where they had these crabs that could somehow cling onto the rocks despite the water running past them? I thought that was pretty cool. Going into this, I didn't really know what to expect other than whale sharks, and I was really surprised when they actually had some seals as well. I think that's a Californian sea lion, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but they seem to be getting on. You know, turning swimming into a form of art, that kind of thing. Next was this Amazonian river replica. With sore catfish and arapaima. And then a capybara, just by itself. But, you know, there was water underneath it, and the water was filled with piranhas. And an urban myth is that piranhas will kill anything that goes in the water, and that's, of course, false. Otherwise, this would be a terrible exhibit. And then there was something I really didn't want to see, and that was dolphins in captivity. They did have some form of stimuli, and it was a rope toy that they were almost chewing on relentlessly. But for something so intelligent, I'd rather see it in the wild rather than in captivity. And then, oh my god, there it was, the huge tank that housed two of the whale sharks. I thought there was only going to be one, but no, they actually had two. You could honestly spend hours here just looking at this tank and all of the different species. There was cow nose rays, great hammerheads, manta rays, guitar sharks, leopard sharks, and even goliath groupers, which are known to eat smaller sharks. It was just a huge variety of different and rare species. And this tank was truly breathtaking. Seeing such huge creatures up close and personal was an absolutely amazing experience. And then at one point, some divers got in. I'm, I'm assuming they were feeding the whale sharks. It was just so weird. It looked like he was eating them or something. And then I got a really good close up of how the whale shark filters through the water, which I thought was pretty cool. And that's when I realized that the way this aquarium is set out is this huge whale shark enclosure is in the center and you sort of spiral down it. And as you do, all the other enclosures with the seals, the dolphins, reveal different layers. So you can see them from the highest point to the deepest point as you descended around the tank with the whale sharks. And there was loads of other fish too. Some weird ones like a giant sunfish. They even had some squid and this weird fish that has fingers. I think this guy's what I took from this trip. Fish having fingers is weird. <laughs> so then we end up going down this dark escalator and it opens up into this huge room filled with all of these really cool jellyfish and other invertebrates, some that live very far down in the ocean. And the presentation of this whole area is astounding. Each little tank is lit up in a way that sort of recreates how a submarine deep down would be shining a light and you see them go in and out of the spotlight. It really creates an amazing atmosphere. And once we'd passed the amazing wall of jelly, we went on to the Arctic.
And they had the most adorable bundles of fat with tiny heads I've ever seen. The weird part was you could get really close to it as the enclosure was kind of open. Once you pass by those cute balls of fat, there is a touch pool. And it's a really big touch pool and has a bunch of stingrays and sharks in there. And you can just touch them. I mean, there's some signs to tell you where not to touch them, like in the mouth for the sharks. But it just kind of made me... I didn't really know how to feel about it. All I can say is I just really hope they don't live their entire lives in this pool. And the worst part was, next to this touch pool, there was a section that housed some rock hopper penguins. And these guys had nowhere to go. It was an incredibly small enclosure and they were just stood there, squawking. But maybe it's just me. The last time I saw penguins in a zoo was in Edinburgh. And that place was massive. So going from that to something like this, put things in a little bit of perspective for me. These are intelligent creatures. I mean, maybe they were all born in captivity and they know nothing else. But I can't help but be reminded of that scene in Happy Feet. I think it's important that we have these conversations. As our understanding and knowledge of a living creature grows, so does the way we treat them and respect them. Back in the day, zoos were just a place to see the weird and exotic, and we never really thought about the rights of them. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bring down the mood of the video, it's just how I felt. Back then and even now, I just think some creatures are too intelligent to be ever kept in captivity. For their own sake. And finally, the real thing I came here for, not the whale sharks, no. A hermit crab with a see-through shell. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Kinda cool. Well, that was Osaka Aquarium. It, even though it's really big on the outside, um, I didn't actually think it would be like, as big as it was. Uh, you seem to start with like six huge enclosures. There was seals, there was dolphins, which well, I'll talk about in a second. Um, but there was like a plethora of different things. I've been to like a load of aquariums in my time, but that one just seemed to have everything. They, they did everything really well like the the exhibits were decorated nicely the um the lighting in it was lovely as well um of course the main reason to come to this really is the whale sharks and there is two of them uh then don't seem to be fully grown i tried to sort of keep an eye on them see if they bumped into any walls or anything it was a huge huge tank but even for a whale shark i still felt it is a little bit small like for going forward like whale sharks are cruisers they just go forward and they just breathe but uh it seemed like they couldn't go five or six seconds without having to turn or move a little bit so if they really want i don't know that's 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 my two cents anyway they also had dolphins didn't expect the dolphins um the ethics of having something that smart in that scenario at least it, it's not as bad as something like SeaWorld, where it is just like blue and nothing they do have some form of entertainment they chewed on some ropes but at the same time i don't think that's ethical to keep dolphins in that sort of environment a fish is fine it doesn't really know too much but a dolphin knows definitely but there was there was penguins there was in that huge whale shark enclosure there was um an albino nurse shark i think and an albino zebra shark guitar sharks and uh everything there was just a wide variety giant groupers even the whole dolphin thing not a good thing and especially even talking about animal ethics uh, you had a touch um area with stingrays and uh, big uh, dogfish, I think they are, the, the sharks. And in, in the UK and possibly Europe, that kind of thing doesn't fly anymore. I used to go to a place in Tynemouth that was similar and there was uh, you could touch the stingrays and they just put a whole net over it. And then once they did that, a couple of months later, they just got rid of the whole thing and put like a glass on top and you couldn't touch them. Um, and it, it just seems a bit sad that they're just gonna live there and that's gonna be their life. And they just get tormented and teased uh, I don't, maybe they don't, maybe they move them on, maybe they switch in and out, but it seems like an awful lot of a hassle to do, and I don't think they will. But it is, as far as an aquarium goes, absolutely amazing. The jellyfish as well, I didn't even expect that, I forgot that, uh, yeah, where's the jellyfish? And all of a sudden you go downstairs and it just opens up and it's all like galaxy and amazing. And then you've got these, even like little, I don't even know what they're called, those things that you see on Blue Planet, David Attenborough. Those things, the, uh, they have the lights and they shimmer. Oh, amazing that they even have those there. Uh, then you've got in the Arctic and they've got these big lumps of fat with tiny little heads. And it's, it's really nice actually. I think the people here, the Japanese people sort of, they don't crowd over a tank 
or a, or a wall where there's a dolphins or any sort of creature, they're all very accommodating. Or in the UK and Europe, everyone's just like barging in, trying to get their phone as close to the, <laughs> to the creatures as possible. And you're kind of trying to look, but they're very sort of considerate. People will kneel down if they're really close to the thing. So it was not a problem getting amazing shots. Uh, if you are in Osaka or even Japan and you are into nature and aquatic wildlife, uh, I would highly recommend this. Of all the aquariums I've been to, I feel like I'm not wrong in saying it's one of my favorite, if not top, aquariums I've ever been to, just because of those whale sharks and that huge enclosure. They had seats there and you can sit down and just spend an hour just looking at them. I would say highly recommend it. And uh, now I'm gonna go and take the metros back to our hotels. Uh, a hotel. Uh, uh, I'll see you later. Bye. It was amazing to see in this, this huge. What's this? What, what, what's going on? It's gonna stay there, aren't they? Are they gone? Because they're not gone. The kids are not gone, Whitney. They're still there. They don't go for 80 years. <laughs>